through if you want to go get it. It's Psalm, Ach, Proverbs. Um, was it 23 now? Now I must just remember. Come brain. Uh, wait. Oops. There yeah, I left it. Let me just get it quickly. Sorry, Proverbs 19. I knew that. I just wanted to test if you know where Proverbs 23 is. All right. <coughs> Proverbs 19, verse 23. So I, I knew it was a 20 something in there. Okay. But it says this the fear of the Lord leads to life. Whoever has it rests satisfied. Now, I don't know about you, but that. That already is for me good enough. And then he continues, he says, he will not be visited by harm. What does the Amplified say there? It says, the reverent, worshipful fear of the Lord leads to life. And he who has it rests satisfied, he cannot be visited with actual evil. Is there any other translation that says it very nicely that you want to share quickly? Wait, 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 pause, Gabe. <laughs> the fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. The fear of the Lord. If you think about this, and this is what, what I was thinking about, is that place where I dwell intimately with God, where... <sighs> I recognize that, yes, he's my savior, but I recognize that he's God Almighty. And he is worthy of my fear. Because he can snap his fingers and I'm no more. He is a powerful God. He can do anything he wishes. Yet his heart and his face is towards me. He's turned towards me. He loves me. And I have the space where I can dwell with God in this presence and when I have this fear of the Lord, when I walk in that place of reverence and awe of Him, the Scripture tells me that I can rest satisfied. I need nothing else. You know when you're satisfied? Have you ever had a Sunday meal? You've chow, I mean, the best stuff. And then you plonk down on that couch. You're like, yeah, life's good. Whew, need a diet. In any case, but, but you're satisfied, right? In that moment, you, act, you crave nothing else, correct? It's not like when your day is a bit busy and, and you have this nibbly thing and you know, I need to chow something, I need to chow something, you know? And I'm like, Caleb's constant state of mind is chow something. <laughs> He's very much like his father. I love him to bits because, yeah, man, you, if, if we had a bank full of money, we will spend it on food, man. We will, we will just care. Uh, we will have a, a roaring time. So we open to donations, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the fear of the Lord leads to life. Now, just think about that. When I have that reverent awe of God, you, you know, may we not in our Christianity lose that. May we not become familiar with God. Yes, He calls us friend. But may we never become familiar to, with Him so much that we lose our awe of Him. And I believe as we walk in that place, we will have life. We will rest satisfied. We will be, not be visited by harm. Now, if there's a promise you want to take... If there's a promise you want to wrestle with, start with the leading one, the fear of the Lord. Sometimes we get angry with God because he doesn't do, you know, I don't feel satisfied or I, I have harm going around in my life. Then maybe just check your fear of the Lord level. How in awe are you standing of God?
And I wrestled with this this week, and I was just like, what? And I just realized, the more I'm intimate with him, the more I stand in awe of him, the more I have life, the more I am satisfied. I don't long for other stuff. And the more harm cannot get to me because I am in him and with him. Huh? Does that not bless you? Does that challenge you, I guess? Makes me want to reevaluate some of my priorities, I guess. But you know, I can simply just come before him and stand in awe of him. So this morning, I want to speak about his church. And I want to start off, you know, we all read um, and know Deuteronomy 28, right? If I ask to say, quote a scripture out of Deuteronomy 28, what will you say? Okay, blessed in the city, blessed coming out. Anything else? Let's pray because you need help. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for your word. I pray, God, that we will dwell in a place where we live from that place of the fear of the Lord. I thank you, Father, that because we do that, we have life. We can rest satisfied and no harm can get to us. And we claim that. We walk in it. We want to receive that. In Jesus' name. Amen. So Deuteronomy 28 starts off like that. This, and it says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Now, okay, that already is good enough for me. I don't know about you. Now, when it starts and it says these blessings will come over you, overtake you, I mean, I'm, 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 looking, I'm looking around. Because I already want to see them coming. Okay? <coughs> Sorry. And I think this is a beautiful thing about God is that if you want to know if God loves you or want to know what God's heart is towards you, then it's for these blessings to overtake you. To come upon you. To rest upon you. It says this, Blessed shall you be in the city. Also, we're living in a city, right? If you think you're living in the Platteland, can I just upgrade your software here this morning? Okay, you're living in the city. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle. The increase of your herds and, your young, uh, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall, be, shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. And then this is, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you in one way and flee before you in seven ways. Now, I don't know about you, and, and I'm sure you would have read the scripture, prayed the scripture, declared the scripture. And it's a beautiful scripture for us to memorize, to think about. But I want to say that these things that we are reading here is not something that we can make happen. It is rooted, it is grounded, it is locked down in a sense in the blessing of God upon our lives. And even in the scripture that I read in uh, Proverbs 19, it is in pursuing, drawing close to him, knowing him, that we will see the blessings of God. And this is Old Testament stuff, people. Can you imagine what this looks like when Jesus Christ comes into the picture and everything changes from there? I want to say to you that the life surrendered to God is blessed. Now, I can, I can see your brains going, but have you seen my life? All the stuff that I'm facing, we'll get there. No? Nah? If you've had some stuff in your life that's not lacquer, there's a saying that says life happens. I hate it when it happens. I like it when I'm in control. We always want to be in control, and then life happens. Curveballs come. So, so you say to me, but what about the bad times? Curves. I want to say to you, 
uh, in response to that, that in my life, I've, as I've journeyed with God through some hectic times, that not even the hectic times is as bad, and I experience them in the same way that someone does that does not know Christ. It's like it's terrible to go through it, but I go through it in this way that, that I'm journeying with the one who's blessing me. That even when I stop and I look around and I look at everything that I've just gone through and I'm still wiping off the tears, that I see the blessing of the Lord. A blessed life is rooted in intimacy with Him, in the fear of the Lord. Now we all quote Joshua 1 verse 8 to 9. We love this portion of Scripture. But I think sometimes we quote it so flippantly. But I want to read it to us again. He says, this book of the law, which is God's instructions to us, shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night. Now, now you can take that religiously and from a place of law and simply want to, you know, not sleep. I can tell you just, by the way, your body needs sleep. But this speaks to me about intimacy. This speaks to me about an awareness of a God who loves me, a God who is awake day and night. Now, whether I sleep at night or not, I, I have this place where I can, can commune with Him. And when I speak about His instructions, when I pray about His will for my life, when I understand what He wants to do, He is willing to speak to me day and night. He says, meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do according uh, to do according to all that is written in it. And then he's got this little sentence there. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. You know, when we in today's age and especially in, in church, when we hear and, and I spoke about obedience, was it, three weeks ago now. When we hear that we need to obey God's instructions or law, it's almost like this rebellious thing kicks up in us that we actually don't want to do it. But I want to tell you that if I read Scripture, and the more I read Scripture, the more I see and understand that I actually need to obey Him. <clears throat> that is given instructions so that I can prosper. He's given instructions so that I know the way. A GPS that is silent is useless. Well, almost. I, I, I like a silent. Just by <laughs> but you know, when you've got instructions, you know where to go. But I love what Joshua 1 says, you know, and what God is inviting him into here is an intimate relationship with his instructions. And I mean, John says this, that the word became flesh, right? Jesus Christ became alive for us. And the more intimately I become with him. Now, obviously, he was here speaking about the law, the instructions which God has given through Moses, which was the path to actually walk in obedience to God. And I think sometimes, like I said, when we get to this side of the cross, we lose fact of the, uh, sight of the fact that God has given us certain instructions. The interesting thing about Deuteronomy 28, and I don't know if you've ever read it in its wholeness, is the fourth, first 14 verses speaks about blessings. Then there is 54 verses that speaks about curses which I found quite interesting and which made me realize that I certainly don't want to not do the will of the Lord because some of those things were, that God proclaimed over them were quite hectic. And then we see if we read scripture how the, his people actually wandered away from him and choose another route. But what I want to focus on this morning with, with that which I want to draw our attention to is verse 9 to 14 of Deuteronomy 28. Because I believe as we read this, I, I hear God's heart for us as a church. 
and for a congregation. Now, if you are visiting here this morning, thank you for being here. It's lucky to have you with us. But I trust that for each one of us that God will maybe shift in something in our lives, in our hearts, or maybe we know this and we've walked in it, but God actually wants to bring us back to this this morning. He begins and he says, The Lord will establish you as a, as, as a people holy to himself. Now let me just pause there quickly. A people holy to himself. Sorry, my throat's a bit dry this morning. And holy means separated. It means set apart. It means they are not part of anything else. They are his. And when I think about the church of Jesus Christ in today's context, I believe this is God's heart for us. That we are holy people. That he has set apart for himself. And when I'm holy, when I'm set apart, when I am His, then I walk and dwell and live according to His instructions, His ways, His will. Why? Because I'm holy unto Him. And He says this, they are holy people to Himself. So we are set up separate for Him. We'll, we'll, I'll, I've got other scripture that I'll, I'll give to you just now. The Lord will establish you, establish you as a people holy to himself, <clears throat> as he has sworn to you. If you keep to the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. All the people, I love this. All the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. So when I'm set apart, when I'm holy to the Lord, when Israel walks in this way before God, the nations of the world will actually recognize that they are God's people. Right? This is awesome. It says, says, and they shall be afraid of you. Not because you are such a mighty people, but because you are a holy people set apart to him. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your livestock, and the fruit of your ground within the land that the Lord saw to your fathers to give you. Verse uh, What's it? Uh, third, uh, 12. The Lord will open his good treasure to you. Ah, oh, come on. Blessing. The heavens to give rain in your land and in its seasons to bless uh, all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you uh, the head and not the tail. And you shall go uh, up. Uh, so you shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and being careful to do them. And, it, <clears throat> and if you do not turn to aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods and serve them. You know, I love the fact that God says that when I live, uh, we live as a church, a holy separated life to him, that the world will, uh, will know it. They will identify it. And I believe as the, Jesus, the, the, the church of Jesus Christ rises up in her purpose and her set-apartness, so to speak, that the nations of the world, that the communities around us will again have to acknowledge God's anointing upon our lives, that we are His people. You know what? And, 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 and they're going to be afraid of us, not, but not in a bad way because they see the holiness of God on us. And that holiness convicts them of their sins. But then we have that, that place where we can minister reconciliation to them, right? We can say, but God loves you. Now, I'm not saying this morning that we must go back and keep all the law of Moses. And that's not what I'm saying. But what I want to draw us att our attention here this morning is that we need to obey the voice of God. You know, we lean as Christians today a lot. We want to hear the Holy Spirit. But I want to tell you that God speaks to us very clearly in His Word. And I've said this now for the last couple of Sundays. So take your Bible. Read it. Wrestle with it. Study it. Ask if you have questions so that those around you can help you. 
God's heart for us is being a people that is holy, that is set apart. 1 Peter 2 9 says, Oh, come on. 1 Peter 2 9 says, But you are a chosen race. Now he's speaking about the church. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. A people for his own possession. That you may proclaim the excellencies, and other translations say the, say the difference, of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are a chosen generation. We are a people who set apart a royal priesthood. We should walk in that manner. We are holy unto the Lord. We should not defile us ourselves with the things of this world. I told the leaders a story this morning as we were praying. So we've got a double volume house and on the call it the second floor side, we, we've got four windows there that, that you can't get to. Stupid. Nice when the light comes through. But when they get dirty, and it's funny how the flies and the, I don't know, all the insects do stuff on that windows and then, then our windows becomes terrible. But for the last couple of months, I don't want to say how many months because I've been lazy. It's terrible getting up there. We, we've had two cobwebs in two of the windows that were there. And it's funny you don't see them until that light comes through there. And then I'll sit there on that couch and, and I get this twitch in my eye and I'm thinking, it's terrible. I should do something about it. And then I look away and I look through the window at the sunrise and I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful because then I'm not looking and still seeing that stuff. And I believe as, as we are set apart people, as the holiness of God comes and it shines on our lives as a church, that we might see some cobwebs. So yesterday, by the way, just to finish my story, I reluctantly picked myself up and got the ladder out and climbed up there and Lorette had to hold the ladder and then, then we cleaned it. And two big groot knoopies had made nest there. Okay? The one even had a set of eggs. So can you imagine? <laughs> Waking up one morning and you see that little... Caleb will leave the house. <laughs> Jamil will follow shortly and mother after that and go, it's your problem, dad. Doomfogger. Saints, we are a chosen race. And I believe as I'm ministering this to you today, there's stuff that God wants to do. There's some cobwebs in the church that God wants to deal with. There's some cleaning. We are holy unto him. When I am holy to him, even stuff like my own comfort doesn't matter. My agenda, my plans, my five-year plan, my 10-year plan, and these things all get, get submitted to him. Why? Because I'm a holy nation to him. I am a royal priesthood to him, I'm a chosen race to him. And he determines where we go. And we are called to proclaim his excellencies, his beauty. Why? Because he's taken us from the darkness into his marvelous light. But we need to allow that light to shine on us. So that we can be holy. Now I would I, I assume and I and I think I'm I can do that confidently that as you've been journeying with God, He's had this moment in your life where He deals with certain cobwebs in your life, right? I think there's a moment here where God wants to say, Let's deal with some stuff. We are holy, we are set apart. We are those that have God's favor upon our lives. We are those to whom his face is turned. We are his. 
we can draw close to him. Come into the holy of holies. We, we've got such a privilege to walk in this place of the fear of the Lord. And I believe as we draw closer to him, we will see that. Those blessings that God just pours out on us. Now understand, even in Deuteronomy, none of you farm. We all were worried about the rain when we had day zero coming. Suddenly we became aware of the rain. But as we pursue God, I believe this land will be blessed. This country will be blessed. Because we are a holy nation unto God. And when God's face is turned toward us, even the worst places become fruitful. Why? Because He promises blessing over us. Now what does that mean for the church here with us? You know, I think as we dwell together as holy peop people, firstly, I believe as, as we see the, 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 the fivefold ministry, uh, the pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, etc., being lived out here, that we will see the saints grow, that they will be equipped for ministry, that we will saints see the people of God go places, that love and care will be displayed, people coming to salvation, sins are forgiven and restoration brought. Why? Because the church is the one thing that Jesus Christ said he is building. Don't believe me? Matthew 16, 18. Jesus speaking to Peter says this, I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but this makes me excited. The church is the one thing. The church is the one thing that will pull, push back the gates of hell. Yet the church, the church's biggest problem is within the church. The people criticizing the church and how the church operates and so on. But I believe as we walk in the fear of the Lord, as we draw closer to God, as we become holy, we will see a beautiful display of the power of God. We will see the gates of hell being pushed back by our presence here, right now. The only way the devil can slow us down or even defeat the purposes of God in the church is when we, his, the members of the church, become defiled. When we disobey or disregard God's instructions. When we fail to walk in a place of intimacy and absolute dependence and a life of sacrifice to Him. When we lose sight of that and, and, and church becomes about other stuff, then the devil brings the division, he brings confusion, he brings distraction, and we lose the purpose of God with the church then we are no longer His church because we are about our own agenda. But as we heal to Him, we lay our lives down for Him. As we become less and He becomes more, we will see the beauty of the church being displayed to this world. Why? Because Jesus said, that's the thing that I'm building. I had a quiet time once, and <clears throat> maybe I've said this before, but as I was praying, I remember the scripture, and it was like Jesus said to me, so Kobus, I'm building my church. What are you busy with? And I thought, oh, shucks. What am I busy with? You see, I think because Jesus thought so much about what we are seeing here, and this is not what I was preparing, but, but he said, if you want to be my disciple you, you don't you know and you don't hate your father and mother and your brother and your sister etc etc then you cannot be my disciple and it's not like he was saying us hate your family but in comparison to him my devotion and love to him it could look like hate because why I'm putting him first his agenda his plans I'm laying down my life for him. As why? why? Why am I laying my down, life down for him? It's because simply he did the same for me. I owe him everything. My life is his. Sin and rejecting the way of God 
his truth will, the restore, will destroy the unity of Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ died for and even prayed for in John 15. Saints, I believe it's time to get rid of the cobwebs. The church again becomes the main, about the main thing, which is Jesus Christ and his agenda for this world. Yes, okay, so we do church in a certain way here. Yeah? And, and the, if this is the place where you feel God is adding you, then you are most welcome. If, even if that's not you, you, you are still welcome. But I think we want to be serious about pursuing God as a church. Because we are meant to be set apart. We are called by His name. We are His. So church... Let us not just seek the blessings of God because surely He wants to bless us. Surely He wants to prosper us. He wants to make your, your, your family prosper. He wants to make the fruit of your ground prosper. We, we want to see the blessing of God rest upon our lives. But may we not just seek the blessings. May we seek the blesser. May we seek Him more and more. May we... Lay down our lives. Let's stand.